After a long time, the A321 XLR officially received safety certification from the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, or EASA for short, in July and performed a demonstration flight at the Farnborough Air Show. While this may seem like good news for most airlines, for Boeing, it poses a huge problem. It captivates airlines, but leaves Boeing out in the cold. Why every airline obsessed with this new Airbus A321 XLR? In today's episode, we will answer all your questions from previous episodes about the A321 XLR. Let's dive right in. What makes this aircraft so special? It's all about the remarkable combination of range and efficiency of the A321 XLR. This single aisle aircraft can fly up to 4,700 nautical miles nonstop, a feat previously reserved for much larger wide body jets. This means airlines can now offer direct flights on routes that were once considered impractical or uneconomical for a single aisle aircraft. Imagine flying directly from New York to Rome or from London to Delhi on a single aisle plane. That's the kind of game changing capability this aircraft brings to the table. However, it's not just about range. The A321 XLR also promises outstanding fuel efficiency. Consuming 30% less fuel per seat compared to previous generation competing aircraft. Environmentally, its improved fuel efficiency translates to reduced carbon emissions per passenger, helping airlines meet increasingly stringent environmental regulations and sustainability goals. It allows airlines to open new routes, increase capacity on existing ones, or maintain service on routes with fluctuating demand, all while keeping fuel costs under control. Moreover, the Airbus A321 XLR is expected to revolutionize airline route networks, offering incredible flexibility and opening up new market opportunities, while providing Airbus with an unprecedented competitive advantage. One of the most significant impacts of the XLR aircraft is its ability to make long, thin routes economically viable. These are routes with enough demand for direct service, but not enough to profitably fill a larger, wide-body aircraft. Notably, this is designed to take off and land on relatively short runways, making it suitable for a wider range of airports, including those that cannot accommodate larger wide-body jets. Additionally, with its increased fuel capacity, thanks to the rear center tank, RCT, it can fly longer distances without significantly increasing the required runway length for takeoff. This allows the aircraft to maintain strong performance even when fully loaded with passengers and cargo. Overall, the A321 XLR is a versatile aircraft optimized to take off from shorter runways at secondary airports and land at major airports without performance issues. This opens up many new routes, particularly long haul ones with passenger demand too small to justify wide body aircraft. With a narrow body aircraft, the number of cabin crew members serving passengers is fewer compared to wide body jets. How can they effectively manage a flight that lasts up to 10 hours? To ensure attentive service on long haul flights with a smaller crew, airlines and crew members often implement various strategies and efficient procedures. First, task delegation and clear service procedures help the crew work in sync and smoothly. Modern technology and equipment such as personal entertainment systems and advanced galley equipment also help reduce workload. Meal and beverage service is optimized by pre-preparation and staggered serving times. Crew members are scheduled for short rest periods and rotated in available seats or designated crew areas to maintain health and effectiveness. Regular checks and friendly communication with passengers create a comfortable and reassuring environment. The A321 XLR's optimized cabin design offers ample space, reducing pressure on the crew for movement and service. Thanks to these measures, the crew can ensure high quality service for passengers, even with fewer staff compared to wide body aircraft. You can explore it in the future after this aircraft is in the commercial. At that time, want more news, analysis, and discussion about aviation? Stay ahead with our latest videos. Subscribe now and never miss out on the action. If you've subscribed to the channel, fasten your seatbelt and let's move on to the next part to explore the challenges of this aircraft. The challenges, the key to success. The A321 XLR is redefining long haul flights as we know them. However, nothing is truly easy. When something succeeds, it inevitably attracts numerous competitors. 
For this aircraft, that competition comes from newer, more efficient, and increasingly modern planes. Nevertheless, as the aircraft is poised to become a real challenge for Boeing, a significant obstacle has emerged, threatening to halt Airbus's ambitious project before it can even take off. This aircraft has been classified as a significant departure from its predecessor, the A321neo. This classification is mainly due to the unique design of the RCT, which is not fully covered by existing certification standards. As a result, EASA had to develop special conditions to address potential safety concerns, focusing on impact safety, fire safety, and occupant protection. These special conditions present major challenges for Airbus, the company must demonstrate that the RCT's position within the fuselage does not create new safety issues, that the tank is sufficiently durable and impact resistant, and that in the event of a puncture, fuel leaks will be contained enough to not pose a threat to passengers. This is no small task and has required Airbus to go back to the drawing board multiple times. The certification process became a stressful journey for Airbus. It involved over 400 joint meetings between EASA and Airbus technical experts, more than 900 hours of flight testing on three test aircraft, and the review and approval of over 500 certification documents. Each test, each inspection, and each audit could uncover an issue that might jeopardize the entire project. The stakes couldn't be higher. If Airbus fails to meet EASA's stringent safety requirements, the A321 XLR might never see commercial service. All the orders, all the potential to reshape the aviation industry, hang in the balance. The future of Airbus's single-aisle long-haul strategy depends on overcoming this hurdle. Finally, after nearly five years of waiting and speculation, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency granted type certification for the Airbus A321 XLR. The Airbus engineering team rose to the challenge, implementing complex design solutions to address EASA's concerns. Their efforts paid off as this aircraft not only met, but exceeded the safety requirements set by EASA. For Boeing, this is not good news. Currently, Boeing does not have a direct competitor to the Airbus XLR. The 737 MAX family, though popular, does not offer the same combination of range and performance that makes the Airbus aircraft attractive to airlines. Airlines seeking an aircraft capable of efficiently flying long, thin routes now have a clear choice with Airbus, while Boeing's products do not meet this specific demand. The timing of the A321 XLR certification posed a significant challenge for Boeing, as the company was still recovering from the 737 MAX crisis and attempting to regain its reputation. The arrival of this aircraft added further pressure on Boeing during this difficult period. Boeing's options were not appealing. Developing a new aircraft would be costly and time-consuming, while modifying existing designs might not meet the unique capabilities of this Airbus aircraft. However, this aircraft still has significant limitations. First, being a narrow-body aircraft, the cabin space is more restricted compared to wide-body aircraft. This can affect passenger comfort on long flights and limit the crew's ability to provide service. Second, unlike wide-body aircraft, the A321 XLR does not have a dedicated space for crew rest areas, this can impact the health and efficiency of the crew on long-haul flights. And third, compared to wide-body aircraft, its cargo capacity is limited due to a smaller cargo hold. This can reduce revenue from cargo transport, an important source of income for airlines. In your opinion, what other limitations might these impressive aircraft have? After ceasing production of the 757, Boeing left a gap in the mid-range aircraft segment, Planes that could fly farther than the 737 models, but were smaller than the 787 series. Airbus capitalized on this with the introduction of the A321 XLR, a formidable competitor. The Boeing 757 remains a favored model for long routes with lower passenger demand, especially on long and thin routes. Stopping production may have caused Boeing to miss the opportunity to exploit this segment. It could be seen as a sound decision based on the market conditions and forecasts at the time. However, with the success of the Airbus A321 XLR, this decision now appears to have left a gap that Boeing is struggling to fill. Some analysts may view this as a mistake, as Boeing currently lacks a direct competitor to the Airbus XLR, forcing the company to seek alternative solutions for the future. 
The 757 was one of the first aircraft to receive extended range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, ETOPS for short, certification. Not only ideal for domestic flights within the U.S., this jet was also capable of completing popular non-stop transatlantic city pairings, making it an operator's dream. What would happen if Boeing continued to improve and upgrade the 757 to make it superior? If this Boeing aircraft was upgraded, which aircraft do you think more superior? Comment 1 if you think A321XLR, 2 if your answer is 757. Despite Airbus gaining a significant market advantage with the A321XLR, the company is also facing numerous issues related to the supply chain and delays in production and delivery. If these issues are not addressed, it might create opportunities for new aircraft from international competitors such as China or Brazil. Stay tuned for the next episode to learn more details. Thank you, and see you next time.